Hi everyone, an animated Stephanie here, ready to talk to you all about gender schema theory. As you can see from this week's topic, this theory falls under the category of individual and group differences. Within this very broad subject, gender schema theory focuses on how gender differences come to be and how a person becomes gendered in society. So before getting into more details about this theory, let's first take a look at what the word schema means in the field of psychology. So from Piaget, we learned that a schema is a group of related ideas or actions. So take a second and think of an egg. I know it's a really weird example, but just go with it. Look at all the network of associations or set of interrelated ideas that come up in relation to an egg. Now imagine a similar organization system or framework in your brain. When you think of a certain concept, your brain activates a schema and unconsciously brings up all of this other information that is linked and associated to this concept, like the different colors, uses, and origins of eggs. One person has a whole lot of schemas for a variety of concepts, as you can see in this really complicated map. These schemas or knowledge structures act like channels or filters that process new information and they guide you in paying attention to things that fit into your schema and then you tend to ignore or explain away things that don't fit in. So now let's get to what a gender schema is. Think of the concept of man, and there's Channing Tatum, just so you can bring that up to mind. What are some of the associations that come into your head? A few that pop into mind are now popping up onto the screen, as you can see. And in adding these words, what I'm doing is actually creating a gender schema. So this is what pops into my head. These are all of the cognitive structures that are activated by the brain at thought of male or female. So a set of all the stereotypical associations that come up when you envision a man or a woman. Someone with a strong gender schema will impulsively categorize new information in relation to gender, as opposed to any other notion, uh, such as ethnicity or age. In effect, they will sort people, characteristics, and behaviors into masculine and feminine categories. So, for example, a gender schematic person will see a young girl, as you can see in the picture, who constantly hugs and kisses her parents, and they will associate her affectionate behavior to her female gender and not maybe just her young age. So yeah, she's just acting like a girl, hugging and kissing people. Since um, this gender schema theory guides their perception, a gender schematic will be will more, like, more likely notice things that are consistent with their gender norms. They will see strong, brave men and ignore those that are more soft and delicate in manner. Moreover, these gender schemas become internalized and are used to process information about the self. From the gender schema, a person learns which attributes are to be linked with their own sex and hence with themselves. However, it's important to remember that people vary in the degree to which they are gender schematic. So how are these gender schemas formed? Let's take a look at that for a while. From a young age, children are taught the many sex-related associations that form the basis of a gender schema. These lessons can come from a number of uh, environmental cues such as what they are told by their parents, uh, how they see other people behaving in real life, advertisements they see on TV or billboards, movies, and the media. A gender schema theory relies on the assumption that children learn what it means to be male and female by observing the world around them. After they make these observations, they modify their behaviors to fit into what is, what is normal and expected by the culture that surrounds them. So now let's take a look at an example of gender schema theory at work. A little boy watches his dad do all the repairs around the house. He observes his dad using tools to fix the sink, build an extra room, and paint the walls. Over time, the connection between his dad and construction becomes part of his schema. Then he begins to associate the schema with his own self-concept and gender. Since he is a boy too, he will be interested in tools, building, and construction. Eventually, he will even come to consider these behaviors masculine. So now that we're all gender schema theorists, we have to ask ourselves, what can we do in the classroom with this information? We can use this theory to understand student behavior in the classroom. So just as 
Jason's disruptive behavior during individual reading time may be due to a gender schema that associates this quiet, passive activity with how girls should behave. Or, Jessica's lack of effort in math class may stem from a gender schema that places math skills under the male category. So, it's up to us teachers to modify our lessons in such a way that we promote gender equality and make sure we break down gender stereotypes. We should take the time to focus away from splitting things along gendered lines. So, for example, try not to call your class back in order by saying, hey, boys and girls, listen up. This just emphasizes the separation between the girls in the room and the boys in the room. Don't use math problems that ask students to calculate how many dishes a woman washed or how fast a man was racing a car down along the track. So avoid gender stereotypes. Uh, and you can show Jessica's class some of the famous women that have contributed to the world of mathematics. And for Jason, you can invite a male author to your class to read from one of the books he has written. And that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, that's it. That's Gender Schema in a nutshell. So thank you for listening.